Hello and welcome to this ninth LaTeX tutorial and in this one we're going to talk about figures and how we how we have multiple figures in one figure. Yes, that might sound strange. When we look at it, you know, ah, that's very nice, very useful. So, we'll just delete all this from last time. We don't really need this images here. Let's update this to nine so we are sure we don't forget the number system. All right, so the first thing we thing we do is 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 we do Let's do a label. Let's end center. And let's end the figure. Alright. Let's upload some new images here. See here. I used place kitten. Let's find some cat images. Yes. So let's forget about the meat right now. Let's do some cats. So a kitten one. Okay, if you remember this from uh, one of the first videos? I totally forgot which number. You can see there's a cat. All right, good. Then let's try and do one more. We can actually just use include graphic one more time. And just to keep it simple, I'm using the same image. And as you can see. They're placed right next to each other. We have a figure, a kitten. The problem is, we have two kittens here. So, how do we do this? We can just write two kittens instead. Then we will actually be able to see we can have two images in one figure. And as a thing in here, we can use V space. And then you can write some space that you want in between. And V space is vertical space. Um, but that's actually not what we want here. We want H space for horizontal. I totally forgot about that. As you can see, we can move the images a little bit from further from each other. Um, and this is kind of useful because right now we want, we may want this. And then we actually want some V space. Uh, let's do the same again. And this time we will use include scale 0 0.5 and then we use the other image that we have. And let's have two of these. And let's try and recompile and see how it looks. Wow, see, that looks very bad. What happened there? Um, what happened was that we need some more space in between here because we need some more space in between the cat so we can force it down to the next line. There we go. But that doesn't look good at all. Like, it's weird looking. Why would you want an image like this? And only one figure text. So let's try and delete some of this. Let's try and begin from scratch again. And this time we're going to use something a little bit different. We're going to use subfigures. And subfigures are very, very useful. But to use the subfigures, we need to have a new package, which is called subcaption. And when we have a figure, we just place it where we want it to, with, for example, here, top. And then we use begin, and then we can write subfigure. Um, and we just want a normal subfigure. And then we need to decide how wide it's going to be. And as a standard, I use three, uh, 0 0.3 text width. And then we can use it, just our normal include graphics. Scale them somehow, a little bit. Let's do the 200, I guess. I remember which one is what. Um, let, yeah, and if we don't know that, we can just click on it and say 200. We kind of want the 200 one. That's also what we got. And we can use caption. And we can 
call this A. Then we can say label. And I normally use subfic. It's called A. And then we can end this figure. All right. If we compile this, we should just have one simple figure. We have one figure, but as you can see, it's not called figure one. It's called A. Maybe let's call it kitten instead. This might be a little bit easier so we don't get confused with the actual numbering system. There we go. So we want a caption for our whole figure. And we can say many. Now uh, we can say a label, we can say fic. Oh, we don't really need that label right now, but we'll just place it there. There we go. We have figure one of many kittens, and we have figure A of a, a kitten. But we kind of need more kittens since our caption says many kittens. So what we just want to do here is that we want to have a little bit space between those images, and we can do this with a tilde. Then we can basically copy because we are lazy. Recompile and now we have figure A and figure B. And we can do this, let's try and do this one more time. Um, and let's call this one C. Because as you can see up here we got a, um, a lock warning which means that figure A is defined multiple times. And we can't really have that because if we reference to it, it doesn't know which one to reference to and give us the numbering back. So here we can have, see we have three kittens, A, B, C. And we can then reference to them and say figure ref sub fig A. And if we do that, we should have one point A or something like that. Yeah, but it doesn't really know it. Why? Sub fig. A. We used a capitalized A. That's why. There we go. Figure 1A. And this is pretty simple, straightforward. Um, we can have a very long caption here. Um, and that might sometimes be a good way to actually have a long caption that explains all the images. And then we can, in the caption, also reference back to each individual image. So let's try and add some more here. Let's try and add three more. But we kind of want them on a new line. So let's try and make a new line. And there we go. So now we have kittens all over the place. Let's try and use vSpace instead. Might be a bit better, 0.2 inches. So then we can actually also control how uh, how this works. Let's try some more than zero. Let's try zero point five. Hmm. Doesn't really seem to change a lot. Ah oh, well, uh, we get some log errors because they are already defined all these labels. Doesn't really matter. You can change the labels as you want to. Um, let's try and remove this vSpace. I don't want it. Okay, and that's how you can easily do multiple figures. Um, this is very useful when having to reference back to a bunch of stuff. Uh, so you don't have to spend one figure on one page, um, like one figure above each other with each figure text. Here it's a lot easier just to have one big figure text and then the figures that uh, controls them. So um, that's it. And next time we're going to do some see some listings that you can use for your code snippets. That's also very useful. So see you next time.